Hey everyone, welcome to MyBoardGameGuides.com. My name is Chris, and today I'll be showing you how to play the farming game by German designer Uwe Rosenberg, a game called Agricola. So as I stated before, Agricola is a game about farming, and your goal in Agricola is to create the best most amazing farm as you possibly can build. Now this game falls under the genre of the worker placement game. So on your board you will start out with two workers, two family members, who will allow you to grow your farm. Other people will also have their own family members as well, and they will be competing to grow their farm and make it look much better than yours. So the way the game works is, as a worker placement is you take your workers, you put them on various spaces on the board, like say resource spaces or spaces that allow you to take certain actions like plowing the field, uh, spaces that allow you to play occupations or take different resources or even grow your family or your house. So there's a lot going on here, and the game can be a little daunting for new players, especially if they really haven't uh, played any other similar games, but hopefully this guide will help you with learning the game so that you can be much more well equipped to play your first game of Agricola. So, as I said, this is about farming. What's the first thing you think of when you think of a farming game? Well, one part definitely involves growing crops. So, how do you get crops to begin growing? Well, there are two components that you need. You need seeds, and the seeds in Agricola come in two forms. There are seeds for grain, which are in yellow. And then there are seeds for vegetables. And vegetable seeds are orange. In addition to seeds, you will also need a field. So these would be, this would be a field that you would put on your board. And how do you get those? Well, there are spaces on the board to plow a field, so here's a place to pl uh, plow a field, and once you plow a field, you can place it anywhere on the board. The first one you can place anywhere, the next couple ones have to be right next to the original spot. But beyond that, it's not too complicated, so you would take the plow one field action to put, put down a field, and then if you wanted to take seeds, you could put it your guy on here to take one grain, or all the way over here if you wanted to take a vegetable. So once you have either a grain or a vegetable in your inventory and you have an empty field or maybe uh, you didn't really sow the fields afterwards, you were able to plow a second field, then you can sow the seeds onto the field to start giving you some crop growth. And if, as you might expect, there is a square for you to sow seeds. So when you sow grain, you get, you would put your grain onto the field and then you would also get two extra grain, not in your inventory, from the outside box to put on top of the original grain. So you would do something like this two crops on top. And if you were to sow a vegetable, well, vegetables are slightly better than grain, so you would be able to put a vegetable on top. But just one. Grain allows you to get two. Vegetables only allows you to get one extra. And the cool thing about grain and vegetables is that once you hit the harvest, and this would be an example of a harvest, so harvests are marked out 
generally at the bottom of the boards. So once you go through one season, you will hit the harvest here, harvest there, another one here, 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 and there. You will be able to take a grain or a vegetable or both if you have both out from your field, harvest them, and now they become new seeds which you can use to plant new fields or feed your people. And yes, feeding your people will be a very important part of the game. So in addition to just planting crops, there's also the idea of, plant, of having livestock. So there are three different types of animals that you can own in the game. There are sheep, there's boar, and then there's cattle. But the question will become, how do you store those animals onto your farm? Well, here's the good news. Your house, defined as just the complete set of your structures, your house can store one animal, not one per room, one animal, period. So if you sent your worker to go grab some sheep, well, good luck. You can put one sheep in the house or one boar in your house, or one cattle in your house. However, if you want to store additional animals beyond just one, and you definitely will want to, the only way to do so is by building fences. And there is a spot on the board where you can build fences. The caveat is that each fence segment will cost you one wood, and when you build fences, they have to completely enclose an area. So, let's say you wanted to build a fence and create a pasture out of it. Well, you can build a one-by-one -one fence, which would look like this. using four fence segments, which would cost you a total of four wood, you would be able to build a one-by-one -one fence, which can hold two animals of the same type. So it could hold two sheep, or two boar, or two cattle. And it might look something like this. Two sheep. However, you cannot mix and match. So if another cattle comes along and you have space for it, you'd have to put it in your house. But you would not be able to hold a sheep and a cattle. Now, if you made the pasture bigger instead of just a one by one square, let's say you made it a two by one square. Well, each square can hold two animals of the same type, but the entire pasture has to be the same animal. So a pasture like this would be able to hold four animals of the same type, four sheep, four boar, or four cattle. And the cool thing about holding animals is that at the harvest, if you have two or more of the same type of animal, they will produce a baby, as long as you have room for it. So the baby would go in the additional room uh, if there's any. If there's not an enough room, then sorry, no baby, you're at capacity. So, to go back, to grow crops, you need an empty field, which you take from here. You need seeds of some sort, either grain or vegetable. And then you need to take the sow action, which will allow you to put those seeds onto the field. For animals, you can take animals from the respective animal space. And as long if you want to hold more than one animal, so have uh, something else beyond just a pet, you have to build fences 
and to build fences you will need wood for each fence segment and you will get resources through these squares. So this square will provide you wood, this square also provides you with wood, and that square also provides you with wood. But now here's the difficult part because during the harvest you will need to feed your people. Basically, each person in your family requires two food. So the question becomes, how do you get food? Because animals can be turned into food. Grain and vegetables definitely can be turned into food. But how do you actually make that happen? Because this is the food that you will need to feed your people. Well, good news. There are spaces on the board that will give you food. Fishing will give you one food. Day labor will give you two food. And traveling players will also give you one food. And the take one read stone food will also give you one food. But if you want to make food from your animals, then the best way to do that would be to get some major improvements. And all these here are major improvements. Major improvements are special cards that once you buy them, they become yours and you would be able to use them in a way that benefits you the best. So this square allows you to get the improvements, but to get the improvements, you have to also make sure that you can pay for them. So every major improvement will have a number in the upper right corner which tells you how much they cost. So the clay oven will cost you three clay and one stone. The fireplace costs you two clay. The cooking hearth is a little special. It costs you either four clay or if you have a fireplace, you can just return it back to get the cooking hearth. And then there's also other improvements that I won't go into. It's beyond the scope of this video, but you can read the cards to see what they do because some of them, like the joinery, can turn resources like wood or clay or reed into food. So if you buy a fireplace, you can convert goods into food. At any time in the game, you will be able to convert vegetables into two food. And that's pretty self-explanatory. Sheep can be converted into two food. Wild boar can be converted into two food. Cattle can be converted into three food. And the last part, but the most complex, is if you have a spare piece of grain in your inventory and you take the bake bread action at any point, you can then convert the grain into two food, but only if you take the bake bread action. But that allows you to convert an unlimited amount of grain into two food each. Now, cooking hearths are a little bit better. Vegetables convert into three, sheep convert into two, boar convert into three, cattle convert into four food, and grain convert into three food. So it is much better than a fireplace. Clay ovens are a little special. Whenever you use the bake bread action, you can convert one grain into five food, but only one grain into five food. But if you do so, it's a pretty good deal, and you'll be able to get a lot of grain for just that one action. On top of that, when you get this card, you can immediately bake bread. So if you have one grain sitting around and you buy a clay oven, you can convert it immediately into five food. Stone oven 
works on the same principle. Whenever you use the baked bread action, you can convert two grain into four food each. So two grain for a total of eight food if you so choose. You can immediately bake bread when you buy this implement. Otherwise, you will have to use the bake bread action for doing so. All right, so we've covered the basics of how to survive. Generally, grow crops, buy one of these major improvements to convert those crops into food or convert the animals into food, and you're good to go. But that alone will not give you a kick-ass farm because you want one that's really awesome. You want it to be big, you want it to be fancy, you want it to be huge and the envy of all the other players that you're playing against. So how do you do that? Well, there are ways of building a bigger house. For example, you can build rooms. This is an example of a room which you can build and to build a room, you need enough resources to do so. So each room will typically require five of a resource. So let's say uh, five wood, uh, five clay, or five stone, depending on the house that you have. And each room will generally also require two reed. Once you have enough resources, you just Put your guy on the build room space, and then you take your new room and place it on your player board. Now, building a room is cool. Living in a bigger house is cool. But the most amazing thing about rooms is that it allows you to grow your family. Because, hey, everybody needs their own private room, right? So, if you have a new room in your house and the square is available there's a square called family growth which will allow you to grow your family thereby giving you an additional worker and that's going to be important because the more workers you have the more actions you can take and the more amazing your farm will look as a result so that's growing your family and you would do so by building a room to make sure that you have an additional room for a kid. The downside with a bigger family is that you will have to feed them. Each family member requires two food in general, but once you have additional people, you'll have to make sure that you can feed them. The only exception to this is if you just had a baby right before the harvest round, in which case the newborn will only require one food. In addition to building your family up, you can also upgrade your house. So if you see on your board, you start out with a wooden house, which is nice and all, but you generally want a higher quality house. So to get that higher quality house, you have to renovate. And renovating is basically upgrading your house type. So wooden houses will upgrade into clay houses. Clay houses will upgrade into stone houses. And they have to go through that order with few exceptions. Now to upgrade a house, you need one read, period, one read, just one read. But for each room you have in your house, you need one of the appropriate type of resource. So if you wanted to upgrade your wooden house to a clay house, you will need one clay for each room. So in this house, which contains three rooms, one, two, and three, you will need three clay to be able to upgrade. And I have to stress, you will need three clay because you cannot upgrade your house piecemeal. The entire house has to be upgraded. So once you upgrade by going to the renovation space, you will then flip your 
rooms over. Yeah, that's your new house. And likewise, if you decide to get a stone house, uh, just pay the appropriate stone costs and replace your clay with stone. And now you have a stone house. So that's basically the game in a nutshell. You're trying your hardest to grow crops, get animals so you can grow livestock, use any of these cooking implements to turn your animals or crops into food during the harvest so that your family members will be fully fed, all the while trying to expand your house with additional rooms to get additional babies and kids to work the fields, but also upgrade the house so that it's super nice. Now, in addition to that, there are a couple other spaces worth noting. There is a square called Family Growth, even without room. So even though space is tight in your house, you could still go here, create a baby. And then when it's time to take the baby back, you will just have two kids doubling up in one room. But that's okay, they should learn to share. And there's also action that allows you to plow one field and sow it. So that way you can take two actions for one and it will be very useful during the course of the game. Finally, and finally, there's one, or rather two components worth mentioning because these components will drive a big part of your strategy. There are occupations. Your family members can have jobs, which is pretty neat. These jobs allow your family members to uh, expand their capabilities. They might be able to farm much more efficiently or do certain do other certain actions that are more efficient than normal. In addition to these major uh, to these occupations, there are also minor improvements, which also helps you get more points and allows your farm to be more efficient or have some special features that uh, that help you to expand even better. So to play an occupation, there's an occupation square. Uh, the first occupation is generally free and each additional one requires one food. There's also another occupation square that's not as good. So definitely try to gun for this occupation square if you can. And then there's also minor improvement squares like this one, which allows you to Take the starting player square, allowing you to go first in the next round and have the first dibs at what's on the field, but also allows you to play any of these minor improvements. And then there are also spots like family growth, which allows you to play a minor improvement. This major or minor improvement square allows you to play any of these major or one of these minor improvements. And then finally, the after renovation square also allows you to play a major or minor improvement. Also, this renovation square is kind of special because it also allows you to fence. Okay, so that is Agricola in a nutshell. A lot of moving parts, but hopefully this video will help you out in learning how to play the game. So if you have any comments or anything else you'd like to add, feel free to comment below. If you want to learn more about board games, especially how to win, feel free to subscribe to my channel. And I look forward to seeing you, and happy farming. Thank you.